Our topic is entitled An Islamic Response to Dajjal's Modern Western Feminist Revolution. In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we sent down the book, yani the Quran, sent it down on thee, O Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, tibiyanan li kulli shay, that this book might explain all things. Wahuda, and in this book, there is guidance Rahmah and that explanation and guidance have come as Rahmah an act of kindness from Allah Wabushra lil muslimin and for those who submit to the book and follow it and search in the book for that which explains our topic today Bushra lahum. Good news and glad tidings for them. For they will understand what others cannot. And they will succeed when others will not. And now we want to understand why did he say, Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, that a slave woman will give birth to her mistress. For this, we have to go again to the hadith in which Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam prophesied about akhiru zaman that women would dress like men. That's an amazing thing. Huh? That women would actually dress like men one day? Would we ever live to see a woman in a jacket? Would we ever live to see a woman in blue jeans? Would we ever live to see a woman with a tie? Huh? Wake up. <laughs> it's already here. It's already here. Women are already dressing like men and when they do dress like men, either they don't know of what the Prophet said or they don't care. They don't care. No. Why? Because they're brainwashed. <laughs> they're following the Dajjal and the only way you can stop them from following the Dajjal is getting a piece of rope and tying them up. Why? Would the Jal take women and get them to dress like men? Why? The answer is that the Jal wants to challenge what religion and society has constantly proclaimed for thousands of years. That men and women are functionally different. The Jal wants to say that all the prophets of Allah were wrong and all the religions were wrong and men, those brutes, were wrong and we, modern Western civilization, have come to liberate women by saying to them there is no functional difference between men and women. And so anything that a man does, a woman must have the freedom to do it. It sounds real nice when you are brainwashed. And so now she puts on the working woman's clothes. And she goes to work and faces the morning traffic like everybody else. Don't be angry with me. 
Don't be angry with me, I have a job to do. And she works all day, like men do. And she comes home in the evening with her briefcase, like men do. And she has now assumed the functional role of men in society. But sister, I have a question to ask. Do you mind if I ask the question? Who's going to take care of the children? You hope, I hope you don't mind my asking the question. Who is going to take care of the children? Because you know, if you don't have any children, your husband will want another wife. Oh yeah. So who is going to take care of the children? Don't be annoyed with me. Oh come on. What kind of an answer is this? Put the children in a daycare center? But we never heard about a daycare center until Uncle Sam came along with it. You know, modern Western civilization. A daycare center? Did your mother do that? Did your grandmother do that? Huh? Now, uh, listen sister. Do you mind if I talk to your baby? So I went to the baby. Baby is only six weeks old, eh? So I asked the baby, and Allah caused the baby to speak. Miracle, huh? Baby, can you hear me? Yes, Uncle Imran. What do you want? Baby, do you prefer the daycare center, or do you prefer mama? Baby says, I want mama. I want mama. I don't want this place. Doesn't your baby have any rights? Does your baby not have any rights? Do you dispose of her rights so casually so that you can pursue your career? Or put her with the next door neighbor? Or put her with a babysitter? Or put her with granny? Or put her anywhere? I have to go to work. I told you, brainwashed. Brainwashed. Okay. Allah says in the Quran, you know, sister, He says, Jazat was sayyia, sayyia to misluha. So here is an Islamic response to Dajjal's modern Western feminist revolution. You know, sister, that baby is going to grow up one day. And baby is going to be a man and a woman. And you're going to be an old woman. You're going to have a walking stick. And guess what baby is going to do with you? Baby is going to take mama and put her in a home for old people. So I went to visit her in this home for the old people. And it looked to me like a junkyard of human beings. You know what's a junkyard? You know the old cars? You can't use them anymore, put them in a junkyard? So I went to her and she's sitting on a rocking chair. And I said to her, Mama, Mama, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, my son Imran, what do you want? Mama, do you prefer to be here in this home for old people or you prefer to be with your daughter and your grandchildren on your life? Please take me home, I want to go back home. I don't like this place. Jaza was sayyia, sayyia to mithluha. So when you put your baby in the daycare center, don't cry when she puts you in the junkyard for human beings. We don't do that in Islam, sister. We don't have this feminist revolution. Our mothers take care of their children. Our mothers are not part-time mothers. Our mothers are full-time mothers. And if a mother in Islam has something to do as an emergency, then all the other women in the village come together to take care of her baby.
while she is away. We don't have any daycare centers. So now, because of the Jal's modern feminist revolution, she is dressing like a man and going out to work. But um, when you go to work, if you want to advance your career, you can't behave like a woman. No, 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 Tabule. When you go to work and you're in the office and you're an officer, you got to behave like a man. Your voice must become masculine. Huh? So you have authority in your voice. Hmm. There was a woman in Mr. Clinton's cabinet. You couldn't tell by hearing her voice. Hmm? So you lose your feminine voice. You have to behave like a man. When Musa, alayhi salam, sister, when he was there in Sinai, in my body, by the well, do you remember? And the two women were there, the two girls with their sheep. And you remember he watered the sheep for them? Of course you remember, don't you? And then they were able to go home. But when, he, when Musa Islam sat down underneath the tree and he prayed to Allah, if you have any good for me, please give me, I need it, I need it, I need it, O oh Lord. And then from the distance one of the girls came, one of the girls came back to meet him. And she's alone and he's alone, nobody else is there. Do you remember how Allah described how she was coming? Huh? She was coming back in a state of bashfulness, in a state of shyness. Hmm? But when the Jaws women go out, dress like men, to work like men, they lose their femininity. They lose their femininity they become increasingly masculine. The Quran describes the creation of the male and the female as synonymous to the creation of the night and the day. Where did it do that? Hmm? Where? In Surah Al-Layl. وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَى وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا تَجَلَّى and by the night and that which it shrouds so mysteriously, so filled with splendor. And by the, the day and its bright light, penetrating light, nothing covered, nothing concealed. وَمَا خَلَقَ الذَّكَرَ وَالْأُنثَى that in the same way that Allah created the night and the day, so too did Allah create the male and the female. So Allah wants the night to remain night, sister. And Allah wants the day to remain day, sister. And when the night is night and when the day is day, look what happens. There is intense attraction between the two. And do you notice that when the day is approaching the night, what happens? It still happens in Islam. But it's gone now in France and in Singapore and in the United States and Britain. When the day is approaching the night, there is so much excitement that the sky is painted in a riot of colors. The sunset. The sunset is there as a sign of the excitement of the day as he approaches the arms of the night. And when the day touches the night, the day plunges into the night. When last did you look 
at the sun setting beneath the sea. That excitement has to be preserved. And it can only be preserved when the day remains day and the night remains night. But the child says, no, <laughs> my night must become day. And so she loses her femininity. And so the attraction of the day for the night begins to wane, to become weaker and weaker. Until eventually the day is no longer so attracted to the night. Oh my, that's going to be a problem now, eh, sister? Are you listening? Then Allah's messenger said something more. He said that men are going to dress like women. Now don't be angry with me, please, I beg you. Well, you can be angry during the lecture, but after the lecture, we must be friends and drink some teetari. He said that men are going to dress like women. One more time, don't be angry with me. If a man has to dress like a woman, the first thing he has to do is to shave off his beard. I told you, don't be angry with me. If a man has to dress like a woman, the first thing he has to do is to shave off his beard. Do you know why Allah put the beard on the face of the male? It doesn't matter whether it's plenty here or a little bit of hair. Still, there's enough here. Two reasons. The first is to be able to distinguish the male from the female. Huh? What's the second reason? So children can play with it. You didn't know that, huh? <laughs> you are violating the rights of your baby to play with your beard, huh? So what's going to happen when men start dressing like women? And the attraction of the day for the night is becoming weaker and weaker. The Jal is going to rub his hands and say mission accomplished. Because now the day will get married to the day. And you'll have a marriage certificate. And the night will get married to the night and you'll have a marriage certificate. Sister, that is where modern Western feminist revolution is taking mankind. And we don't want to go that way. We who follow Muhammad want to go in a different direction. Where the attraction for the male and the attraction for the female must remain powerful powerful so she's lost her femininity but that's not all she's also losing her fertility she can't have babies when you're trying to play being a man something happens to your body Allah wants that the woman should have her babies when she is young. When the body is young. And the body is youngest of all and best equipped of all to make babies after she has reached the age of puberty. That is the best time. You got to have peanuts in your head to tell me that the woman is better equipped to have a, a baby at 25 than at 15. I don't have peanuts in my head, excuse me. And all through history, women had their babies when they were 14 and 15 and 16 until Dajjal took over. And now they're having their babies at 25 and 26 and 27. But then some of them can't have babies because the womb refuses to deliver a baby. And this is a problem because if I don't have a baby for him, he will take another woman. What to do? So you go to a place called a clinic, fertility clinic. And they're very expensive. 
we're talking about a slave woman giving birth to her mistress eh? and you pay a large sum of money to become pregnant and all that you try but nothing works nothing works but remember you earning a big income you got a career you got a BMW in the yard there you're a modern woman but you can't have a baby I feel sorry for you sister I'm not laughing at you so now guess what you do you go to Indonesia knock 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 are you there so the slave woman comes out <laughs> and you make a contract with her if you do it in New York with an American woman then you take her to the clinic and your husband's sperm is injected into her egg hmm? so she can become pregnant with your husband's baby it gonna cost you 70,000 US you don't have that kind of money so you travel to Jakarta or to Bangladesh huh? and you get the slave woman knock 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 and you make a contract with her and you only pay 7,000 so she goes to the clinic and the sperm is injected into the egg and she becomes pregnant Allah. she got a first class baby there inside of her she's a slave woman but for nine months she got to drink mineral water that baby should not get this polluted water eh? and for nine months no GM food eh? only the food that's served in five-star restaurants got first-class baby there and then the baby is born <laughs> and the mother is paid and the baby goes first class while the mother remains a slave but this does not explain all of it it is only when a baby girl is born that the baby girl will rule over the mother if a baby boy is born the baby boy will not rule over the mother so this explanation is not adequate the prophet said sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam one more hadith and again connected with Dajjal he said the time will come when one man would have to maintain how many women how many how many fifty five zero what is fifteen Bahasa Mimbu Numeru Lima Biro <laughs> one man would have to maintain fifty women now listen don't go back home and misquote this hadith to your wife eh? <laughs> he didn't say one man would have to marry 50 women so when you go back home and report this hadith to your wife make sure you report it properly one man would have to maintain 50 women what this hadith indicates is that there is going to be a calamitous decline in the birth of baby boys so great will be the decline that hardly any baby boys are going to be born tomorrow why we held an international Islamic retreat in Trinidad a year and a half ago and then we held a second one in Cape Town in March and now we're holding the third one here in Malaysia inshallah next year and the retreat was meant to teach the reality of the world today using the Quran and Hadith and in that Hadith in that retreat a medical doctor stood up and explained to us he said that the the sperm of the male has male chromosomes 
and female chromosomes. And when the male chromosome fertilizes the egg, then a baby boy is born. But if a male chromosome fails to fertilize the egg, then the default would be a baby girl. Aristotle said the same thing 4,000 years ago, but he said it in a clumsy way. He said in his Nicomachean Ethics that when nature fails to produce a boy, a girl is born. <laughs> The doctor explained that the radiation that comes from cellular phones and from laptop computers, and notice where the laptop computer is placed, hmm? that this radiation damages sperm production, making the chromosome weaker and weaker until eventually the male chromosome will be too weak to fertilize the egg. Hmm? Maybe that the genetically modified food also has a role to play. Maybe that the pollution of the environment, the atmosphere has a role to play. But the fact is that there's a tomorrow which is coming when very few baby boys are going to be born. If you have a political system in which one man and one woman has one vote, then the majority will rule. Allah did not create women to rule. No, he did not. But Dajjal says, I'm going to make them rule. So Dajjal has given you the cellular food. It's very handy. Oh yes, but this is the price you pay. And tomorrow, when there are very few men and large numbers of women, guess who's going to be your prime minister? And all the ministers in your government. This is not to say that women do not have the intellectual acumen to be scholars and to be administrators. This is not to be in any way insulting or demeaning women. No, your mother was a woman and your mother was the best teacher you ever had in your life. How can you speak of women as being inferior to men intellectually? Are you crazy? No. How can you speak of women being morally and spiritually inferior to men? Are you mad? Did the Messenger of Allah not say that all of mankind will stand before Allah on Judgment Day, men as well as women, as equal in his sight as are the teeth of a comb? Did he not say that? But Allah did not create women to rule. No. Allah gave them complementary roles. The night has to do the work of the night and the day has to do the work of the day. And so they complement each other. They're like two halves that come together to make a whole. But Dajjal says, no. Dajjal says, I'm going to put an equal sign between the male and the female. And he did it, and they swallowed it. The brainwashed followers of Dajjal. Now let us go to the last part, and we will end. He said that women, now don't be annoyed with me, women would be dressed and yet be naked. I wonder when that will come. Huh? How many more thousand years we have to wait? Women will be dressed and yet be naked.
Hmm? So they said to her sister, why don't you go to the beach and take a bath? Hmm? You can't go to the beach and take a bath with that long jilbab and that hijab. Take it off. So let me give you a bathing suit that only the legs will be exposed. Eh? So she took it off, put on the bathing suit. And then he said, no, 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 that's not so convenient. Now take off that, let me give you something called a bikini. Huh? So uh, we have to follow, we're brainwashed. <laughs> took it off, put on the bikini. Well, what is the end of this? Allah created women beautiful. Every man would agree with that statement. Allah created women beautiful. The most beautiful thing in the whole world for a man is a woman. And when women uncover their beauty like that, the natural consequence, you should not be surprised, the natural consequence is that you're going to end up having sexual relations the way animals have it out there in the open. Huh? The natural result is that you're going to end up having sexual relations the way animals have it out there in the open. Huh? Will this happen? Well then, sister, allow me to quote one more hadith and I promise you I'll end. Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam said that the time will come when people will have sexual intercourse in public like donkeys. Like donkeys. That is where the modern western feminist revolution is taking mankind. And when they have sexual relations in public like donkeys, the babies are going to be born as auladu zina, bastards. And he said that the majority of children who will be born will be bastards. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our eyes so that we can see what they cannot see. The direction in which Dajjal is taking the world of women. And that we would act as firmly as we possibly can, as firmly as we possibly can, to protect our women from being seduced and destroyed by Dajjal. If your daughter does not want to conform with what has come from Allah and his messenger then get rid of your daughter if your wife does not want to conform with what has come from Allah and his messenger then get rid of your wife because if you don't they will take you into the hellfire ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين آمين. In سورة النساء give her a warning. If the warning does not resolve the problem, then put her to sleep separately. If that also does not resolve the problem, then if you think it can work, then Allah gives you permission. To strike her, but not, not with a big piece of wood that will break open her skull. <laughs> no, it's not an act of brutality. Don't be stupid and come at that with us. The Quran is not advocating brutality. Huh? Stupid people say that. Let me repeat it one more time. Stupid people say that. The Quran is actually advocating an act of mercy. He said, use something like a toothbrush. Huh? It is a psychological blow intended to wake her up. But if she's not a kind of woman 
who could respond to that you might be in danger if you take the toothbrush and strike her she might take her shoe and hit you in your face there are women in the world like that stay away from them stay away from them okay and look for a pious woman who conformed in her life and her behavior with what has come from Allah and his messenger and there are many like that in the world get rid of this one divorce her any more questions